Everyone have a good weekend? Yeah. Was your weekend busy? Well, former President Bill Clinton had a very busy one. He has been out promoting a new book that he has co-written with author James Patterson. It's a thriller fe featuring a fictional president who overcomes tremendous obstacles, including an impeachment. And in that novel, the president becomes a hero. While discussing the book, Mr. Clinton has been asked some pointed questions about the Me Too movement. This is so interesting, right? All these years later, to have him have to sit and answer these questions in today's climate. Um, and about some personal moments during his own time in office, including his affair with White House intern Monica Lewinsky. NBC's own Craig Melvin sat down with both, both Mr. Clinton and James Patterson in an extraordinary exchange that's making a lot of news. Here's some of the conversation. Watch. A few days ago, in response to, to critics who have suggested that you should have resigned, in the, in the wake of the Lewinsky scandal, you said that you should not have. If, if you were president now, in 2018, with, with everything that's, that's going on with the Me Too movement, how would you have approached the accusations differently? Well, I don't think it would be an issue because people would be using the facts instead of the imagined facts. If the facts were the same today, I wouldn't. In 1998, President Clinton shocked the world first denying, then admitting to an affair with then-White House intern Monica Lewinsky. The scandal launching a lengthy investigation that ended with Clinton becoming just the second president ever to be impeached. You're asking, well, don't we have a right to change the rules? Yes, but you don't have a right to change the facts. Clinton says critics are now pouncing in light of the Me Too movement, but he stands by his decision to fight impeachment rather than resign. So a lot of the facts have been conveniently omitted to make the story work. But I think partly because they're frustrated that they got all these serious allegations against the current occupant of the Oval Office and his voters don't seem to care. I think I did the right thing. I defended the Constitution. You think this president's been given a pass with regards to the, the, the women who have come forward and accused him of sexual misconduct? Uh, well, I think that, uh, no. But it hadn't gotten anything like the coverage that you would expect. President Trump has been accused by numerous women of inappropriate sexual behavior, all of which he denies. I like the Me Too movement. It's way overdue. I think that it doesn't mean I agree with everything. I still have some uh, questions about some of the decisions that have been made. This March, Monica Lewinsky penned an op-ed in Vanity Fair taking responsibility for her part in the scandal but also admitting that years later, she was diagnosed with PTSD from the unrelenting public scrutiny. One of the things that this, this Me Too era has done, it's forced a, a lot of women uh, to speak out. One of those women, Monica Lewinsky, she wrote in an op-ed that the Me Too movement changed her view of sexual harassment. Quote, he was my boss. He was the most powerful man on the planet. He was 27 years my senior with enough life experience to know better. He was at the time at the pinnacle of his career while I was in my first job. Uh, out of college. Looking back on what happened then, through the lens of Me Too now, do you, do you think differently or feel more responsibility? No, for... I felt terrible then. And I came to grips with it. Did and you ever apologize no, to and it? No, yes, and nobody believes that I got out of that for free. I left the White House $16 million in debt. But you typically have ignored gaping facts in describing this, and I bet you don't even know them. This was litigated 20 years ago. Two-thirds of the American people sided with me. They were not insensitive to that. I had a sexual harassment policy when I was governor in the 80s. I had two women chiefs of staff when I was governor. Women were overrepresented in the attorney general's office in the 70s for their percentage in the bar. I've had nothing but women leaders in my office since I left. You are giving one side and omitting facts. Mr. President, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to present a side. I'm no, not... no, I'm, you asked me if I agreed. The answer is no, I don't. And I, well, I asked if you'd ever apologized, and you said you had. I have. You've apologized to everybody. I apologize to everybody in the world. It is important to me that everybody who has been hurt know that the sorrow I feel is genuine. First and most important, my family, Monica Lewinsky and her family. 
but you didn't apologize to her. I have not talked to her. Do you I, feel I like you owe it, her an apology? No, I do. I, I, I do not. I have never talked to her. But I did say publicly on more than one occasion that I was sorry. That's very different. The apology was public. And you don't think a private apology is owed? I think this thing has been, it's 20 years ago. Come on. Let's talk about JFK. Let's talk about, you know, LBJ. Stop already. I don't think President, do you think President Kennedy should have resigned? Do you believe President Johnson should have resigned? Uh, Someone President. should ask you these questions because of the way you formulate the questions. I dealt with it 20 years ago plus, and the American people, two thirds of them stayed with me. And I've tried to do a good job since then with my life and with my work. That's all I have to say to you. Wow. Wow. Joining us now to talk about the inter interview is Amy Holmes, co-host of PBS's In Principle, and MSNBC political analyst Zerlina Maxwell. Great to have you both here. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. What a day. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what a he should have taken the last half of that mm -hmm. last answer and let that be his whole answer. Mm -hmm. I have yeah. tried to do good in my life since then, and I want to leave it at that, right. right? Everything before that, in my view, was a mistake, and he's about to get hammered for it. I think so. And doesn't Craig Melvin know that it's not nice to pick on old people? I mean, <laughs> I mean, what's, did, his, but the victimhood the by victimhood. Bill Clinton, no one thinks I got out of that for free. I right. was $16 million in debt when I left. Because the the you had to defend yeah. your own right. bad behavior, your own right. lying under oath. That's, that's why he was impeached, not because of an affair. Right. He lied under oath about the affair. And was suborning perjury as well. And that's not, that does not relate to JFK or LBJ. Right, right. Yes, they cheated on their wives, according right. to what we read. But that, Bill Clinton got impeached for lying under oath, which is a felony. A felony. Right. And I would also point out that even way back in the mid-'90s, we knew that cruising the intern pool was wrong. Yeah. Okay, it wasn't the Middle Ages. And he had actually signed into law in 1996 a sexual harassment policy making this illegal. Yeah. But you couldn't use this power dynamic. All the way back to his time in the governor's office. Exactly. Yeah. As he said, he knew about sexual harassment law. He just cho chose to ignore it. What do you, as, as a, a former, you used to work for the, for I, I worked for Hillary Clinton. And as a former comm staffer, I wish I had prepped him for this particular interview because, you know, I know his staff very, uh, I'm very close with many members of his staff. And I think, you know, they, they have good intentions. But I think his defensiveness in this particular interview came through in a moment when it's really not helpful, right? It, I think that he He's correct that times have changed, right? We understand this issue in a completely different way than we did in the 1990s. And certainly, this is a relevant issue because of who, you, who is the current occupant, occupant of the White House versus Bill Clinton being the occupant in the 90s when I was in junior high. But I do think that he approached this interview in a defensive posture. Now, I would admit, he, he, he knew it was wrong back then. Correct. I think he that, knew it was I wrong think, when I he think, did it in the 90s. I think that you are right to say that the, the last piece of his answer where he showed contrition was the best part of that interview. And you know, I, I think that we have I think to, a lot of people don't want to loathe contrition. Bill Clinton. They don't right, want to loathe right, Bill Clinton. Right, right. But he spent the first half of that interview trying to make them. Right. It's not me. Poor me. I was in debt. I don't owe her an apology. Um, well, then he wasn't what about even, Trump? Right. Uh, like, Take responsibility, exactly. because let's not forget it wasn't just Monica Lewinsky. Right. He was right. accused of rape, rape by Juanita Broderick, who had two witnesses who claimed to have seen her moments after it happened in a hotel room and testified Kathleen to Willie, her. Kathleen uh, Willie, who claimed she was harassed advances, by him in, their, yeah. in, in his uh, mm -hmm. office. And Paula Jones, with whom, to whom he paid $850,000 right. after she alleged that he exposed himself, exposed himself yes. in, in a hotel. And room. in this interview, we saw that he wasn't even straightforward in his quote, contrition. At first, he says that he apologized to her. Then when Craig presses him further, he's like, no, I haven't spoken to her. So he didn't apologize to her personally. personally right. So uh, if someone like, you know, has a bad relationship with me and treats me badly, they don't get to just post a general apology on to Facebook. everyone in the world. Right? Okay, <laughs> like, that, everyone in the world right, that doesn't that doesn't cut it. And I think President Clinton knew that. And that's, again, why he was deflecting, sliding all over the place. And then finally, Craig Melvin pressing him. Well, he tries to make it. Craig look like the bad guy. Right. Craig Melvin I mean, is Craig a does, very fair, a honest, very, great yes. reporter. He's a wonderful guy. Yeah. And he, he can't, over and over, anyway. you don't have a right to change the facts. A lot of facts have been conveniently omitted. What facts uh, is he you, you've ignored about? gaping facts. You are omitting facts. 
What facts? What facts? Well, okay. you, so what facts? I'm just going to speculate on what he may have meant in that particular context. I think what he's talking about is it was a consensual relationship with the unhealthy and problematic power dynamic, which is a different thing than sexual assault. Those are two separate things. But he so was asking him about, he started with the Lewinsky quote, which we all know that that was a, a consensual affair. But if you read the Lewinsky yes. piece, it's all about how right. even she's starting to rethink how right. consensual it was, given the fact that he was 27 years older. He was the president of the United States, and she was fresh out of college as an intern. The right. power, it couldn't have been any more severe. I mean, at that, the, and at she the time, well, feminists absolutely pointed out that dynamic. But as I said... Not Gloria Steinem. She backed Bill Clinton all along. And she well, she's just York one feminist, right? There are many feminists, right? Feminists of color certainly uh, criticized the president at the time. But I also think that we understand the issue in a completely different way. Um, I think the current occupant of the White House has been the catalyst for us actually reexamining how we think about these issues. And I think... Some that, of us. Some of us some of knew us. this was wrong back right. in the 90s. Correct. But I think that as a culture, we were very accommodating to abusers. We enabled abusers, and I think now we're not going to make those same mistakes. Yeah, what about his claim that Trump hasn't gotten anything like the coverage you would expect? My own reaction to that was, yes, he has. He has gotten a ton of negative coverage I on everything. A certain anchor host asking him very pointed questions. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 It, he got a ton of coverage, right? <laughs> it's just uh, Trump supporters didn't care. Yeah. It's not that the media didn't doesn't cover Trump's. I mean, there's so many, right? So right. maybe maybe you can't do as Stormy you Daniel. can't go full you can't go full time on Trump's sexual harassment right. scandals because there's so right. much to discuss. Mm -hmm. But um, he's gotten a lot of coverage. Just yes. His supporters didn't care. They didn't care, but I also think the media framed it uh, improperly. They put, sort of packaged it together as these are women accusing the president of a particular thing, and he's denied it, so we can just move on to emails or whatever Hillary Clinton scandal that we want to talk about. I think that in terms of trying to look like we're balanced in the coverage, we, we covered uh, those two stories equally when... 19 women accusing someone running for president of sexual harassment and assault trumps emails every single time. The problem is, I said this back mm -hmm. during the presidential race, literally back in 2016, we were faced, as women, as voters, as men, all of us, we were faced with the choice between one man who bragged about grabbing women by the you-know-what mm -hmm. and was accused by over a dozen women, no matter what the count is, it's over a dozen, of sexual harassment or assault, mm -hmm. and one woman who was married to a man repeatedly accused of sexual assault and rape. Yes, and I but think, she's a separate think, and individual person, and so I never want to live in a world where... But I don't want to put an alleged rapist for, in the White House. But I, what I'm saying is that I never want the woman in this particular situation to be blamed for something someone else but did. But she was blamed individually. Of, Juanita Roderick, Broderick has made very clear that, she, that Hillary Clinton allegedly came up to her and said to her, knowing that she was accusing Bill of rape, thank you for all you've done for my husband, because she originally testified it hadn't happened. She originally, one right. year, did, did. And said, mm -hmm. thank, you for, thank you for all you've done for my husband. And then held her hand longer and said, for all you've done for my Allegedly. husband. Allegedly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm Megan, just saying, these right. are, these, this and, is what's right. been out there. And Megan, getting to your point in terms of the coverage, it was problematic when you had the candidate on the Democratic side of the ticket who certainly shouldn't be blamed for her husband's uh, bad behavior, but during the time not only enabled it, she was on the team to smear and defame the women that Bill Clinton had sexually harassed. If you remember, they were trying to put out the story that Monica Lewinsky was a delusional stalker yeah. and had made it all up, and yeah. Hillary Clinton was a part of that strategy. This is all, all what led me in 2016 to say, do better, America. Do right. better. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.